Little Dragon's Cafe is the latest brainchild of Story of Seasons creator Yasuhiro Wada, and is an attempt by the looks of it to return to his Bokujo roots. Yasuhiro Wada has had a checkered past of games released since he left Marvelous. One needs to look no further than his first non-Story of Seasons attempt, Hometown Story, a game that left a lot of fans disappointed. Now he looks to be trying again at Little Dragon's Cafe to try and recapture that initial magic. So how does he do? Little Dragon's Cafe's premise is you taking the role of one of two siblings and running a cafe of their mother. It is a peaceful little life from the start until disaster strikes, and their mother comes down of a strange illness, leaving her in a coma-like state. It is here that you find out that your mom is part dragon from a strange old man, and the only way to awaken her is to raise a dragon and turn your cafe into the most successful one in all of the land. So from here you set out and start exploration and cafe management to try and bring her back. Little Dragon's Cafe's gameplay is very simple and straightforward, which in turn makes it very fun and relaxing and enjoyable when you want to unwind. The game is broken up into exploration and cafe management. In the exploration part, you'll go around the open world discovering new items and recipes to put on your cafe's menu. The world will start off very small from being able to explore the area around the cafe to incredibly large as the story goes on and your dragon grows. I like this idea because it makes the world feel like it's growing alongside of you, from when your dragon is just a hatchling to the first time it takes flight. I allowing traveling the expanding open world to become an adventure in and of its own. When exploring, see the dragon as an extension of yourself, as it will have its own stamina meter as well. To keep the dragon happy, you need to feed it and pet it when it's feeling tired. I honestly really like the relationship between the player and the dragon. The bond you form with the dragon can bring a smile to your face. While the resource gathering can feel repetitive at times and begins to feel like the day-to-day -day chore, I always got a strange satisfaction for discovering new areas as they opened up to me. There would be times I would find an area that I had no clue that I was able to get to as early as I did. After exploring, you need to take all the resources you gather and put them to good use. That is where the cafe management of the game comes into play. When you find recipes in the overworld, you're able to cook them in your kitchen and add it to your menu. The cooking part of the game is honestly the best part. You cook dishes in a rhythm game. The better you perform, the better the quality of the dish is. As your chef cooks more of the same dishes, you're able to enhance dishes with better ingredients. This makes the rhythm part more challenging and lets you hear more of the catchy tunes. The only real complaint I have about the cafe part is how the things work in the dining room. You are not required to stay around and babysit your staff while they take orders, serve, and do dishes. You're free to go out into the overworld. However, they are prone to slack off during work, and you'll get a notification when they are slacking off while in the overworld. Early game this becomes rather annoying as you could be extremely far away from the cafe. Thankfully, there's a single button that allows you to return to the cafe whenever you need to to straighten out your staff members. At the same time, I felt like the frequency of how much they slacked off made it harder to get much exploration done. While you don't have to go and check on them, if you don't, your customers will leave dissatisfied and your end of the day rankings will suffer, causing your reputation to not grow. However, the only adverse effect I have seen from this is that you can't progress the story if your reputation doesn't increase, and I have never seen it decrease yet. So now it kind of throws out any real risk since there is no monetary system in the game. Where Little Dragon's Cafe shines the most would have to be the writing with the wonderful and colorful cast of characters. Each character takes a focus on a different guest that stays at your inn. Through their time at the end, you'll help them overcome any troubles or problems that they may have. This can range from a little boy who wants to be a warrior, to a witch who has lost her ability to cast magic, to a runaway child, and other guests. Each one of these characters are very unique, and I wanted to do all I could to learn more about them. This also doesn't account for the main cast of characters, either. You have a motley crew of employees who are running the cafe, and despite most of them being incompetent, they do an amazing job at keeping you engaged. The writing is what kept me playing through Little Dragon's Cafe. The gameplay is charming and very relaxing, but being able to help people out with their problems to learn more about this world was the real treat that I stayed for. While I wish there could have been more to the overall world building, I enjoyed every person I had a chance to befriend in this adventure. Maybe one day in a sequel, the game can be about running an inn in a bustling city as opposed to the outskirts of nowhere. The writing and character development in this game will always manage to warm your heart. The writing alone makes the grind for everything enjoyable and gives you a sense of purpose as you go through. The story will run you about 30 to 40 hours depending on how long you choose to take your progression. Each chapter clocks in at about 1 to 3 hours. Little Dragon's Cafe has a storybook aesthetic. Everything looks like it was drawn maybe on the pages of a colorful book, and the overworld is no different. The entire world is extremely colorful and a real treat to explore. However, there is a big difference between the PlayStation 4 version and the Nintendo Switch version. Performance in the PlayStation 4 is targeting about 60 frames per second, 
in, but while it does dip at times, it doesn't really ruin any time with it. On the Nintendo Switch, however, the frame rate targets 30 frames per second and suffers from much more frequent frame drops, and some weird animations. While this is less of a problem when docked, it's still a bit jarring at times. For the kind of game Little Dragon's Cafe is, you may find yourself getting used to it. At this point, which version you get will boil down to your own personal preferences. Another quick issue is that on the Switch version, load times are much longer, and they are also quite frequent on the PS4 version. Pop-in is also quite prevalent in both versions, again with the Switch version being the worst offender, but I never found them to be really off-putting. Finally, with presentation, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the game's music. The music sounds like it's straight out of a Story of Seasons entry and gave me fond memories of a wonderful life. Honestly, the entire game harkens me back to playing A Wonderful Life on the GameCube, but that's another topic. The music for each area of the map you explore is very relaxing and helps tie together the entire package. The only downside is that there isn't any nighttime music, so after 6pm the music will shut off and you'll be stuck with the ambient night sounds. Finally, the music for the cooking portion is so catchy that I'm always trying to make the most complicated dishes possible so I can listen to the songs in their full length. Little Dragon's Cafe is honestly a return to form for Yasuhiro Wada. He has managed to create a game that manages to recreate the magic he did when working on the Story of Seasons series. This game may not be for everyone, but if you're interested in a game that will truly warm your heart and help you unwind after a busy day, Little Dragon's Cafe is a game for you. All it really boils down to is your preference when it comes to performance. I'm excited to see if Little Dragon's Cafe will become Wada-san's next Story of Seasons. And that does it for our review of Little Dragon's Cafe. To see the written review, be sure to check out our website, GamingGamma.com. A link to that review will be provided down in the description bar below. Also, if you want to see some gameplay of this game, I'll be doing a Let's Play of Little Dragon's Cafe on the channel as well. I should have a link to the playlist for the first episode at the end of this video. If you have any more questions about this game, by all means, please leave them down in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, if you're new to my channel, finding me out for the first time through this review, hey, be sure to subscribe for future reviews, commentaries, let's plays, and more. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.